Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. Hey, everyone. In today's podcast, we're going to talk about do the resources used matter when we're waiting for a window to exist? Hey, everyone. It's Joe Glines here from Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and Jackie here from Copenhagen, Denmark. And uh, today, as I said a few minutes ago, we're going to talk about um, the, do the resources used matter, meaning how much resources you're consuming when you're waiting for a window to exist. And uh, this came up because let me uh, let me share my screen here. And I'll show. Well, well let's, let's brainstorm here a little bit, explaining it is. Um, I'm constantly right now. I was dragging video and audio files and stuff to a thumb drive, and every time I would pick a different file, I'd get this warning. Uh, and it would come up and say like, hey, you know, we'll see the warning here in a minute. I forget the exact wording. But it was really annoying to always have to select a box and whatever. And I said, you know, let me, let me see if I can automate getting rid of that. Uh, I, first, I thought it would be a, a registry setting or something. And unfortunately, I didn't, I didn't find that solution. Um, I actually found an auto it solution. And then I looked at theirs and borrowed from it. And I wrote my first approach using a set timer and waiting for a window to exist. Uh, and then using a set timer to go back and check on it. Uh, and then... And then I happen to remember a podcast that Jackie and I did where Jackie showed me how to use shell hooks. And in that example, um, he wrote it where it was waiting for Notepad to exist. And it was like instantaneously, the second that window was created, you can trigger off of it and act on it. And so um, I took these two approaches. Now, let's go ahead. It's a good segue. Let's show the code here. Yeah. This one is the uh, the set timer, and, and a set timer, you know, it's a nice way to work around um, single threadedness and auto hotkey, but you want to go back to it. And here I'm going back to it every half a second, uh, 500, 1,000 be a second, and it, it jumps in here. It looks for this one interrupted action, and we'll, we'll you know what, let's go ahead, um, let's drag something so we see this warning. So this is the, are you sure you want to copy this file without its properties, which no, I'm not, um, but it's just really annoying of like, I always said, yeah, click this and yes. And so I'm sending the alt a, which, which triggers that you can see the underscore there. So the alt a and then alt y for the, this, so this script will do that for me. Um, and, and it works and it works, it works great in this one interrupted. What I did here was I came in here with windows spy and said, Hey, what is this window? This is where I got this one interrupted. And I put it up in here, and everything works. I'm going to hit cancel here just so we don't do this. Everything works great. Um, now, the other, the shell hooks example, now granted, this win hook is a, you know, it's a class that's uh, um, not exactly tiny. I mean, it's not huge, but it's, it's, it's in another file, so it looks a little shorter than it really is. Uh, but we, we're going off the created, so we're watching for this window. And what's interesting, I was explaining to Jackie when I was doing this, was notice this is not that one interrupted action. It's canceling 0%. And what was interesting was this here in the class is the – Jackie, do you remember who the author is from the windhook? Uh, not right now. No. Yeah, um, here, oh, it's in the – Yeah, yeah I, I have a good idea who it is. But, oh, yeah, uh, Fanatic Guru. Yeah. Um, so, so he has it where, um, you can trigger off like the title, um, or the class. And so I put in the title I had from the other one and it wasn't working and it was really weird. So I went back to that window and I found the class, which I'd have to, let's go drag this in again. And, and this will give us the here. Um, and I, I got the, uh, this class. Oh wait, it wasn't that class. No, higher up. It is, it is there. It's the second line from the top. Oh, thank you. Sorry. Sorry, my bad. Right. I'm looking at like the controls things. So here, yeah. And I said, okay, well, I'll, I'll use the class. And I, I didn't have this in here. Um, this was just gone like this. And it works great. However, I thought, you know, that operation status window, I don't know if that exists in a lot of things. So I really wanted to get that class back. And then I remembered from Jackie teaching me in that that podcast was he actually stores the the title for you so i used that um the thing to pull back and show me what the title was and it was actually this and now when i have it in there it works great um this one honestly works a little bit faster because it it doesn't the other one there's a set timer and we're going every half a second or however long you put it for 
So at certain times, when it starts, it may have just missed that window and you wait the full time. Other times it's right away. This thing, it's instantaneous. Um, so it's, it's they're both really cool approaches, I think, for for doing. Anytime you'll have a pop-up window or something, right? Great ways to deal with them. Um, but then the thought occurred to me, hey, do I really want something like this running all the time? You know, either of these approaches. Is one approach better than the other? And does it matter? Right? Of do they do they consume a lot of resources? Is the computer always sitting there waiting? And in my mind, I initially thought, well, the set timer is, you know, if you use that every half a second, it's going to at least have some breathing room, you know, in that half a second or a second where it's not killing the CPU or anything. And I'm not doing the set timer, sorry, set batch lines equals zero. Um, and, and so it's, it's having some breathing room. But the, the window shell thing in my mind, like, hey, it's probably, I thought it might be a little more efficient because it's always ready monitoring that queue or is, 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 is it the, the, the shell? No. What was it, Jackie? Do you recall? Yeah, from again, it's a long time ago, but how I remember it is the shell is kind of the one that tries to help all the windows act cor correctly. So when a window or a process does a thing like create a window, it tells the shell that it's creating a window because now it wants to get focus and other things. So the shell is notified by a Windows message or uh, whichever process it uses. And then it notifies the rest of the windows, right? It tells other windows that now something else has to get the focus. And that's a process you can hook into, the shell hooks, mm -hmm. right? So you hook into that queue, that information stream, so to speak. So as soon as the process says, oh, I'm creating a window with this title of this size and stuff like that, you're actually hook into that message stream. So yeah, you don't really use any resources. It's Windows taking care of it. You've hooked into it. You have told the Windows shell or whatever way you want to put it. When this happens, notify my script about it. That's, that's mm -hmm. the big part of it, right? You're saying to the shell, please tell me when a specific action happens. I need to know. So, yeah. Cool. Um, and we, Jackie and I were talking a little bit earlier too, and, and what I was talking to Tank as well about it, and um, the, the mutual feeling everyone had is like, look, today's computers, they are, we have so much memory and such fast CPUs. The things that we're comparing, you know, and like, well, it's, you know, and here's the other thing. It, it, it's irrelevant. Like if I was dragging a, a five gigabyte video file versus a, a 500k file right it's totally irrelevant because that's not being used in the consumption of what the tasking part of the computer right it's not eating up additional resources all that's happening are both of these different versions are it's monitoring for something and those are both such infinitesimally small amounts of resources being used that you probably shouldn't have listened to this podcast anyway. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but, but really was like, hey, you know what? You're splitting hairs on something that just doesn't matter. Yeah, we've talked about it at length before, Joe, right? It, it's some of all these things will, buy, will make sense if you're making software on an international level where people's computers or it's running on a server or whatever. There are cases where resources does matter, but when you're working on a pretty normal standard PC in a work situation or at home or whatever, it should have way more resources than we need for tasks like it. this. It, it could probably handle running a thousand scripts that did this without you even feeling it. So yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, so uh, I, I think it's it's cool. We we showed you know two interesting ways to look for a, any type type of pop up window, and of course then you would take action based on them. You know, depending on what you want to do, but that really that monitoring of it, it just it doesn't matter. It just uses so little resources, that, especially without a hotkey. Right, it's just built very cleanly. And and the other one which I was talking to think about is like I'd like someday to map out at least a couple of them because even a lot of the like. Uh, the when exist or when active and stuff, those things are wrapping like um, send and post message type things or window hook stuff. And we're, you know, it to, it makes it look simpler to us, 
But in reality, they're still using these shell hooks in some way or, or a post message to go do the stuff. And uh, it's it's just, it's much simpler. Well, it doesn't take up nearly as much resources as you might think. You know, it, almost all of them, I'd say one could probably argument argue that, that the set timer in specific settings was using a little bit more, but again, the, the OS and other things actually make sure that it's not taking completely off. You could use a loop, which is like normally not recommended, but if you then used win wait, a built-in command to a hotkey that has that functionality to build in, the script will hit the win wait line and wait for the window to exist. And the moment the window exists, the next few things happen exactly the same as every half second look for a window to exist. And if that's an if, I think it was an if in your example, if <laughs> window exists, no, it doesn't exist, pass. And right. then a half a second later, it checks again. If you instead made it into a loop, loop, win, wait, the same exact title, it would just stand on that win wait line every single time until the window existed. When it then came into existence, it would do its thing, run its course, and the loop would repeat and it would again be standing on win wait, whatever. So there's multiple ways of doing it and almost none of them really use any type of system resources if programmed correctly. Now, now two things, well, all right, let me start with one. I'll probably forget the second one. Um, that do pop into my mind is some stuff that you mentioned too, Jackie, is in a roundabout way, is the thought occurred to me too, am I going to take this script and put it in my main script? Because, you know, I have like this one auto hockey script that's about 2,000 lines long. And that's where a set timer is awesome because it's so easy to, to not have to worry about that. Um, if you did it in just a regular loop, right, clearly you have some serious problems having it in your bigger picture thing, right, of, of it's much more. Now, if you keep it separate, um, so much easier to deal with. But then you have a whole instant, which is perfectly fine, too. You have another instance of auto hockey running, whoop de do right? But it's one of those, like, you know, maybe I'll bring it into my main script, use it. Now, actually, Jackie, in my head, I can't quite think this through. With the, the shell hook approach, can I put it in my main script <laughs> and will it will it work the way I want? Because it's just monitoring it, right? It sets yeah. it and yeah, okay. Unless your main script has some kind of critical areas or uh, do not interrupt, no timers, stuff like that, different types of things you can set in your script. If you don't have specific settings like that, no problem. Mm -hmm. It's an unmessage thing. So as soon as your script gets the message from the shell, the script will find the time, set out the resources, jump to the function, do its thing, and go back to where it was. Well, and, and see, so that was the part I wasn't quite clear on with the, the shell hook side was after it happens once, does it trigger again when the window comes up again? It will. Yeah. Okay. That's what I didn't didn't really grasp of. Um, Let's yeah. say you had a big process that was going on and on and on and on, copying, finding the next, maybe looping a thousand files, and each file came with that message box or whatever it was. Okay. And instead of each time the loop ran, you checked for the box and waited. No, you just put in a shell hook because it's only... Mm, half of the files that says this property thing. So you don't want it to use half a second each and every file because that will make the task take half the day. No, only the when it actually happens. So you make a shell hook and it keeps looping. It loops and loops and loops. And every time it comes up, oh, there's the window, jumps down to the function, makes it disappear, goes back into the place in the loop and keeps going up until it happens again. Oh, and jumps down to the function, goes back to the loop and keeps looping. So yeah, the shell hook will work just fine in, in this aspect, but it's not that much difference from having a set timer. The set timer will just 
take a bit of time from the loop every about 500 milliseconds. And if the check is quick enough, you wouldn't feel the difference. Right, right. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks, man. This is, uh, I, I, I think, actually a very practical usage of auto hockey, too, that we don't really, we haven't discussed a lot of, I know in a webinar, I think we talked about, you know, squashing a pop-up, but it's it's a very, you know, it's nice to be able to, it's so simple to do uh, with auto hockey, but yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Cheers. Yeah, bye.